Hello again folks, this is Sula, and welcome to part 2 of a Let's Play video for Bionic Commando. So we're going back to our old school gaming roots. In the first part, we played through the first 7 levels up to area 8, and at this point in time we're going to pick up right where we left off, continue on with the next level for this game in Bionic Commando. So here we are in the next level, just going to pick up with everything else we had before. This level has this brick theme. Oh, and I messed that up. I should have Bionic shot it off that thing up in the top to get the extra life. Oh well, just forgot about that. So if you watched the first part, you saw that we got through some of the earlier levels here. We're going to be going through the second half of the game, some of the more difficult stages. Things are going to get increasingly tricky from here on out, and hopefully I'll be able to continue making it through pretty well. So, uh, okay, here we have to go into the communications room. For anyone who doesn't know, you need to communicate in every level in Bionic Commando in order to open up the door to the boss, otherwise you can't make it through and can't keep progressing through the game. So anyway, that out of the way, we're going to keep going here, and this level has all these minecarts right here, as well as all these spikes. So we're going to go up here and... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute! Oh. Wait, how did that happen? I, I guess I just used the Bionic Arm up onto the spikes? Well, that was pretty careless. Okay, I guess I just wasn't paying attention and, and um, jumped up onto the spikes. That was really silly. I should have been paying more attention there. I didn't even use the energy recovery pills. Just wasn't expecting that. Anyway, this is actually a pretty easy level, all things considered. I mean, I'm going to take a hit from that minecart there, but that's it. And uh, from here on out, endless soldiers are going to parachute in, but this really isn't very difficult. If I remember, the, the exit is right up here, uh, right above me here. And yep, there it is. This is actually a really short level, not very difficult at all. But uh, you do need to play this level because you need the weapon that you get at the end of it. We've just transferred Joe to another location. Oh yeah, so the plot for this game, if you didn't see the first part, if you didn't see the story, is you're supposed to be trying to rescue somebody called Super Joe. I guess that that's some kind of a Japanese play off of the fact that American GIs are usually referred to as Joes. But anyway, you're supposed to be rescuing some guy called Super Joe, and they said they just transferred him to another location. Anyway, you have to play Area 9 because you need this. Wow, that sounds really dirty, doesn't it? We've just obtained 3-Way. But that's actually the name of the gun that you got. Again, it's a weapon called the 3-Way. And you need that in order to play Area 7. Now, the 3-Way is not a good weapon. It's actually a terrible weapon, as you'll see when I play this level. Well, first we have to do a little mini stage against this truck. See it? There's the 3-Way. It's that little weapon down at the bottom. It's not a good weapon. It's much worse than the rocket launcher in pretty much every way. Uh, as we'll see. Anyway, just have to get through this level. I don't need more continues. I don't expect to die so many times that I'm going to need to continue. I already have three of them, so... Anyway, there we go. Just get this out of the way. And now on to Area 7. Like I said, this one you have to take that weapon. You need the three-way. There there it is, right there. I'm going to take everything else standard, but we need that. Uh, the problem is it's the only weapon that can break this little barrier. If you shoot that barrier with anything other than the three-way, then you can't make it... You just get stuck there. You can't move on. But this is, uh, this is what makes the stage hard, because the 3-way is a terrible weapon. Look how many shots it takes to kill one of these things. Rocket Launcher kills these things in one hit. At least I think so. I've never... I mean, you can't actually get here with the Rocket Launcher, but Rocket Launcher kills everything with one hit, so I'd assume that it would kill these things with one hit, too. So, yeah, this is a terrible weapon. It takes a ton of shots to kill anything. Um, I would much rather have the Rocket Launcher. So this level is actually hard because they make you take the 3-way. I mean, it looks kind of cool. It shoots in three directions. It's got that weird graphical effect it's like um you know flashing between like red and green at the same time anyway oh let's see oh, only a pellet in there i was hoping for energy recovery now this part of the stage starts to get pretty tough because these helicopter things keep appearing and they keep going above you and they will appear endlessly they will never stop appearing so you can't like think to get rid of them or anything like that well, i'm gonna try to knock them back with the bionic arm but they just won't get out of the way uh you also need to make some pretty difficult moves with the bionic arm to make it through here um, let's see. I was trying to shoot up at that thing, but couldn't get rid of it. Yeah, we have to go up here. See, we have to go across. Uh, these things are getting in the way. Let's see if I can scroll them off the screen. Alright. No, they didn't go off the screen. I was hoping to get rid of them. Alright, gonna have to burn the energy recovery pills there. Alright, let's get across before they reappear. Again. Come on. Okay, I missed that, but I can go off the lamp. Come on. There we go. And oh, got it. Yeah, see, that is not easy, and again, those flying helicopter things will just keep coming back endlessly over and over again. Oh, and by the way, then you have to fight another one of these RoboCup guys again here at the end of the level. Oh, Joe is here at the end of this level, so if we beat him, we will get to rescue Super Joe. But notice how the rocket launcher kills this guy in four hits. We have to shoot him again and again and again. Also, oh, okay, he's going to hit me. And these things don't even have range. They just disappear after, I don't know, a short, after a relatively short distance, the thing just disappears. 
And this guy is going to keep using his own bionic arm. Ow! Stop doing that. That's really irritating. Uh, I don't even know what he does. He just grabs you and, like, pulls you next to him. I don't, I don't, you know, use your imagination as to what he's actually doing there. Uh, so this is actually turning into a relatively close battle. I have to make... Oh, he still has another hit? I thought he died when he had no health left. Okay, so he still has another health bar there. Alright, there he goes, finally. Okay, so now we can shoot the computer and end this level. Oh, okay. Now I have to be genuinely careful because if that little spark thing hits me, I'm going to die. And I don't want to play this level over again. So we're just going to be careful here. Come on. Shoot it a couple times. Okay, I could have gotten a few more shots there. Come on, you stupid three-way. Look how many times I have to shoot this thing. There we go. I guess it's they're trying to send you a message of not to use the three-way in this game. Okay, cutscene time. Here we go. Unlike other levels, there actually is... Um, stuff going on when you beat this one because, yay, we get to rescue Super Joe and we get to see what he looks like here. By the way, that's you. Mr. Joe, I've come to rescue you. And it's Super Joe. I'm sorry to cause so much trouble, Captain. Something terrible is going to happen. Remember there was a plant in the bads. Yeah, the bad guys are called the bads. Ugh, a huge laser cannon. Oh, no. The Empire is trying to accomplish what the bads couldn't do. But they can't complete this project because the person with the key knowledge is dead. His name is... Master D, and we'll see who Master D is later on. Killer is trying to resurrect him, but has been unable to do so. We must stop him before the project gets too big. I'm going to Area 12 now. Can you fight with me? Haven't we already been doing that? Oh, he also starts talking about something called a machine gun. The machine gun's a terrible weapon. You don't want to use it. I'm not even going to bother going to get it in Area 18. Anyway, leave it to Japan to take a relatively straightforward World War II era shooter and turn it into a game with um, bionic arms, with giant laser cannons, and with enemy commanders being tr trying to re resurrect them from the dead. So, um, only in Japan will you see this sort of thing. Okay, anyway, on to the last few levels, and we now finally have to go to that orange communicator uh, because you use it for the last three levels. So anyway, did you get all that plot details? They're apparently trying to resurrect Master D, who will then build a giant laser cannon, which will destroy the Federation. Y okay, anyway, <laughs> nobody plays these games for their plot. Let's just put it that way. Uh, here, oh, I thought you could actually bionic arm over there. Okay, these last couple levels have some very tricky stuff you have to do with the bionic arm. See, we have to get on those platforms to the left, so I'm going to swing here to the left, and then right there, going to use the arm to get back up there. That's the easiest and safest way to make that particular jump. Anyway, spikes down there, so we have to get over those spikes right there. Um, again, this stuff is not all that easy. It is a little bit tricky to get through. Uh, just needs to practice these in order to make it through. Here, you have to ride on the little slime underneath the spikes. See the two spikes there? Otherwise, you can't make it past there. Pretty simple, but again, if you don't know the spikes are there, you'll probably walk into them. Get, get off me, you freaking slimes! Okay. Anyway, uh, moving on. There's the communication room we have to go in, and uh, so we're going to jump in here. And again, you need the orange communicator, or else you can't communicate here. Now, what's tricky about this is what you have to do when you get out of the communications room. You need to immediately run to the left, use the bionic arm, and jump across. And if you do it, you land on the moving platform. Otherwise, that moving platform is a nightmare to try to land on. And also, you just want to walk off to the left. There's no need to use the bionic arm to try to hit that last platform. Yeah, you're, you have a, basically a blind swinging jump onto a moving platform above a bed of spikes. It's really hard to do, but if you immediately run to the left when you come out of the communications room, you will land on it every time. If you don't do that, oh, stupid little drone thing. If you don't do that, then you will almost certainly miss, and it's a really hard jump otherwise. At least they give you a break at the end of the level. They just give you another PPP robot, and yeah, uh, one hit, and he's dead, and that's it. So that, that was really easy there at the end. But some of those jumps you have to make with the bionic arm are very tricky in that level, so they kind of make up for it there at the end. We've obtained 1-Up, so your reward for beating this level is an extra life. Uh, okay. That it's, uh, it's actually pretty funny if you go through this level and you die like three or four times, and then your reward is one life. And it's like, oh great, I just died four times beating this level, and you're going to give me one life back for beating it. Thanks a lot. Okay, there, oh, this is a little bit different. They've mixed up the, uh, we've got the other of the two little mini stages here. Uh, there's two different ones you can get. Actually, there's a third one, too, where you go through, um, like, the sewers. But uh, this is the other one when you're in the outdoors. There is actually a sewer passage that links, I think it's, it's two of the uh, neutral areas. I can't remember which two. 
Anyway, but on to area 11. This is another tricky area. It has all these flames on the ground, which are basically the same as spikes. You, in order to get past this early area, you have to hookshot or uh, bionic arm across the ceiling. Hookshot, I think I'm playing Zelda or something. It looks like you can ride those platforms on the ground, but you can't. They don't lead anywhere. You have to go across the ceiling. That was really nice there. An extra life for basically nothing. That's nice in case I die a couple more times. And here we have to go across that globe there. Yeah, that was a pretty nice shot. Uh, take out this thing. Oh, didn't kneel in time. Okay, so anyway, that part at the beginning is quite tricky to get across the flames. And then up here, there's more really tough jumps. This is the uh, this is the second part of the stage. It's tough. You have to go across these things on the ceiling. And, whoa, what is going on here? I don't even know what's going on. Okay, so I missed that last one. But I should be able to run across the flames here, if I remember right. Yeah, just take the one hit. Use the energy recovery pills. Now for some more tricky swinging jumps. Oh, I didn't make it! Oh, well, that worked out. Okay, I wasn't entirely expecting that. That worked out, though. And now we're up to the end of the stage. So this is actually pretty easy. All you have to do is get behind the lasers. And look at this guy. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Uh, it's like he's doing some kind of aerobics routine right there. But uh, he just stands there shaking his little baton or whatever it is at you. Basically, if you just go up on the top and shoot the little laser cannons, guns, things, then that's the only thing that can hit you. So the end of this level is pretty easy. It's just getting all over all those open flames that's tricky. And now here, last item we're going to grab is Bulletproof Vest. This is another nice item. It's just a shame it comes so late in the game. It's almost too late for it to matter. It's the same, it works the same as the Pendant, except that instead of taking one bullet, it will absorb three bullets for you. So it's nice. We're definitely going to grab that. So we want the Rocket Launcher, want the Bulletproof Vest, want Energy Recovery Pills, and we need the Orange Communicator. So here we go. Last level, last level gets its own music. We're gonna check out, no, I'm not close to getting another um, life bar thing. Don't. So I don't need to worry about pellets in this stage. I'm not gonna get an extra life bar thing. All right, first thing we have to do is we have to communicate and look who it is that we're talking to in this level on the communications. And yay, it's Super Joe. Thanks for telling us, by the way. Area is divided by two barriers. In order to break the barriers, you should break the power system. Find the power system. So in this area, you have to, it, indeed, as he said, you have to break these two different barriers. You have to go through these rooms, uh, which have these little rolling, oh, I guess this area doesn't have the little rolling ball. Here you have to dodge the sparks. So we're just gonna dodge these sparks. If you run at the right time, you should avoid them. Sparks move just slightly faster than you. Um, and I think that we actually avoid that room. I know that there's some place in this level where you have to avoid that room. I don't know if it's that one though, or the second one of these, these chambers that we have to go through. Anyway, if it's if you do have to go in there, I'll know soon enough after I go through here. So let me just check this out. It has been a while since I played this game. Oops, wait a minute, I didn't want to do that. I was hitting up and I just went right through the door again. Okay, so shoot this guy. Oh, and he's got a buddy too. Oh, right there, bulletproof vest. Yeah. And okay, that barrier is still there, so I do indeed have to go in that door. Uh, apologies for the backtracking. I couldn't remember if that was the one I needed to go into or the one I needed to skip. And this is the one you need to go into. Okay, so now I'm just going to dodge these sparks, wait for that one, and wait for it to go past, and here we go. Okay, so we need to, oh, shoot this thing. Just drop down, shoot it, just dodge the shots. There we go. Whee! Jumping on the springs is fun. Whee! Okay, it, it, oh, get, get, get in the door, jump backwards, there we go. And now we should be able to move past that. Right here, you have to go up in order to dodge that spark. So see, if you know the spark's coming, you can get around it. Otherwise, you're going to take a hit. These sparks you can dodge, but there's another room with the sparks in it that I'm going to go into right after this. And it's much harder to dodge the sparks in them uh, for reasons you'll see in a minute. There's this bouncing ball, and at and one point, you have to duck underneath the sparks, and it's really a pain to do. Anyway, we're just going to grab the energy recovery pill. And now, remember how there was that barrier there? See, now it's gone. And yeah, goodbye. So now we can go on to the second half of this level. Ride the platform down. So once again, always want to make sure to communicate anytime you have the opportunity. One of the things about this game is you always need to communicate. Uh, you can actually skip the... I haven't even talked about the wiretapping. You can use the wiretapping, but uh, it doesn't really do anything. You can just find out more information about it. Joe's going to destroy the main power source of the base. Isn't this like in every game when you're supposed to be working with someone and yet you never see them do anything while you do all the hard work? Anyway, I don't know, maybe Super Joe does something, we just don't see it. So now we have to go through another one of these levels, see how this one is pretty much just the same. That bouncing ball doesn't hurt you, but it does knock you around, so it makes it harder to dodge the sparks. So anyway, just gonna wait for that thing to go off the screen, scroll it away, and now we'll move, go through. 
So, um, I think that this is the level where you can skip the going into that room. I don't know, I can't remember too well. Maybe we should just go check it out anyway. Never mind, just gonna skip it. We'll just go past. Uh, right here is where it gets tricky because see how the ceiling's lower here? You have to duck, duck underneath the spark, and then that makes you take a hit from the other spark. So I don't know any way to get through that without taking a hit, unfortunately. Okay, anyway, now we're down to the room at the end. This is the room we have to go through, and now we have to shoot this thing again. But unlike the previous time, there's soldiers in here, not that they're very difficult. Oh, I actually went right into that guy. And let's see, there we go, and that should take it out, and let's just jump up and down on the strings for fun while the thing's blowing up. Whee! Okay. Anyway, that's the one we needed to take out, so uh, I think that we just have to leave here now. Or maybe we need to go into... Oh, stupid spark. Or I don't know, let's just go in here and check it out anyway. I think that you don't have to go into this one. I'm not 100% sure. But let's just find out. Oh, it's another one of those shield guys again. It's too early to feel safe. I'll kill you here. So anyway, but unlike the first time we fought this guy, when we only had the pistol, now we have the rocket launcher. So now if we can get behind him, we can kill him in one hit. Ah, but he turned around. Amazing that that shield can block a full rocket launcher blast, but apparently it can. And, uh, come on, come on. Oh, this is taking too much time. Come on. Ah, uh, jeez. Come on. Ah, oh, this is so boring. All right, whatever. Just run through him. There, okay, he's dead now. Okay, th yeah, I think this is the part that doesn't do anything because you can just shoot the thing and it doesn't blow up. Anyway, um, let's just head out of here. You can actually go back out the door. Or were I, was I supposed to do that again? Uh, I don't know, I'll just try it once more. I feel like you're supposed to blow this one up. Maybe you're not supposed to. Oh, this guy's back again. Uh, I think I might just be wasting my time here. Okay, I'll try it one more time. And, uh, yeah, nothing's happening, so I think that you just have to... I, I think that this is like a dummy stage where it doesn't really do anything. Oh, well, we'll just skip this and go on. And if I do have to come back here again, I always can, even though it'll take forever. So let's just head back here and continue moving on and see if I can move on with the stage from here, down here. I think that there's a barrier down here that goes away now that I have taken out that uh, that thing at the bottom of that cha chamber. Nah, I don't need it. Yeah, okay, so now this this was blocked off, now it's not. And let's see, down here, I'm going to use the energy recovery pills right here because I have to go over these spikes. And watch this. Be very delicate here. Okay, not quite as hard as it looks, but I wouldn't say that's easy either. And, okay, here we go. Now for the big confrontation. Hey, remember this guy? Remember how we saw this guy in the one neutral area before? He's saying, but you're too late. The albatross has already begun to move. Not necessary to wait for Master D to revive. Just cut the switch for the revival device. Master D will never rise again. Now it's your turn to die. Wait, what? And apparently, Master D is not pleased with this guy. He's going to wake up. He's going to jump out of that giant cryo chamber thingy that seems to be in every science fiction movie or TV show ever. And now he's going to walk through the wall, apparently, and start talking to me. And oh my god, it's Hitler! Yes, so the big the big secret in this game is, yes, actually, you're, the villain at the end of the game is Adolf Hitler. I'm going to take over your army and rule the world. What? You're going to fight against me? You damn fool. Yes, swearing in a Nintendo game. You'd never expect that. I'll show you the horror of the albatross. The only one downside about this is, this is the albatross. This is the big scary thing that you're supposed to be fighting. See this? Okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a giant laser cannon. Um, it's a little bit silly, so yes, Hitler and giant laser cannons in this game. Anyway, you need to uh, use a bionic arm to get up top here and shoot it in the glowing uh, orangey yellow thing in the top right. It's a little tricky to get up there, but it's not that difficult overall. You just have to grab that thing at the top. Make sure you have the rocket launcher for this level, though. If you don't have the rocket launcher, this thing takes like 50 shots. I think it takes about 10 with the rocket launcher, and it just keeps going back and forth. All right, let's just go up here, and there we go. So yeah, that's it. Not that hard to beat. You just need to get up there in the top and shoot the glowing orangey yellow thing. All right, so that's it. That's the end of the game, right? Right? Uh, not quite. We still have more stuff to go ahead of uh, time. So get another little cutscene dialogue here. Great English here, by the way. I'm Hal. I take this bazooka. I love the English dialogue here. There's a chopper down here. Aim at the cockpit as you jump. You can do it. So, you have to shoot the cockpit as you fall, and let's see if I can do this. No, I missed it, and I'm dead. So, another one-hit kill. If you miss the cockpit, you die instantly. <laughs> 
this game is not all that forgiving, like I said. So you get one shot at this. If you miss the cockpit, then the helicopter just shoots you and you die instantly. Oh, and you have to watch the cutscene every time. Thanks a lot, Hal. Aim at the cockpit. So let's see if I can pull this off on this second shot. Come on, come on. Yes, got him. Ha ha ha. Got him. Oh, and you get the most amazing 8-bit cutscene ever here. Your number's up, monster! Ah! Oh! Oh! Oh my god! How did they get away with that in this game? Unbelievable if they could do that. Yes, Hitler's head explodes like a ripe melon at the end of this. I mean, it's amazing, but it, it's kind of hard to believe that they got away with this. This base will explode in 60 seconds! Evacuate right away! So yes, that's not the end of the game either. Not only do you have to shoot the cockpit before you can get out, then they do the standard Metroid-style escape from the base before it blows up. And you only get 60 seconds. Oh, by the way, did you think that you could just use your uh, bionic arm to get away? Nope, you gotta fight this guy too. Have to fight another one of these Robocop guys. So come on, let's just gotta sh shoot this guy in the face. Come on. All right, I keep messing this up. There we go. Come on, one more shot, one more shot. Okay, two more shots, there he goes. All right, and this is actually tricky. What you have to do here, watch this. You have to use the bionic arm like that and then swing across. And I should be out with plenty of time now. Let's see, 27, 26, so made it with 25 seconds to spare. And guess what? That finally is the end of the game. That's it. Oh no, is Joe still inside? Let's go back in to see. But from here on out, it's all cutscenes, guys. So that's the end of this one. What happened to the captain? We cannot wait any longer. We are going to escape now. And then generic soldier, please wait just a little longer. I uh, love that translation. Hey, what's that? Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ba-boom! It's pretty nice 8-bit art. I bet that you couldn't do that well with pixel art. Looks pretty impressive in that big explosion in the background. Anyway, it is Capcom. It's to be expected. Pretty much everything Capcom did in the in the 80s and 90s was just amazing quality. Here we go. Even that looks really neat. Uh, I mean, it, you, with uh, the way that they're using the yellow light there to make it look like they have they uh, are looking at an explosion blast. Pretty cool, I say. And then apparently that's how your bionic arm is supposed to work. I guess it's supposed to come out of his wrist or, or something. I don't know. It's pretty neat that you're wearing sunglasses too in the middle of the night. I guess that that shows that he's a you know he's a real cool dude. So here we go. Battle has ended and we have a new hero now. I was feeling... What was he feeling? Different as I received the blessings from comrades. Okay. Also another little, uh, just a little thing there. See how the date is 1989-47? That's actually July 4th, 1989. Japan uses the same dating system as the rest of the world, not the US where it goes uh, a day then month. So that's it, and now we get to see the people who worked on this game. Uh, two people worked on character, or I guess five people worked on character design right down there. And then for program, we have Ichiro, who is moonlighting from his baseball duties, and Twilight, Oki-chan, and Windy. So that's what five character designers, four programmers. Let's see, music done by Gondamon. Gondamon! So one person did the music, and let's see, one person did planning, Hat-chan probably not the pronunciation and then special thanks to mr. FF whatever that means so all total about 12 people made this game again it's hard to believe that the, the development teams are so small with the NES games but it was really only about 12 people that made this whole game now the epilogue so much time has elapsed and I'm old now I think it's time for me to tell you the whole story I hope this come on line hope this story will be told for a long time and then that's the epilogue, uh, February 8th, 2010, Joe. Isn't it funny that th th that was supposed to be long in the future when this game was made in 1988, and yet now it's actually in the past? It makes me feel really old as I record this video. Anyway, though, that's it. That's the end of the game. Nothing more to see here. Once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll have more stuff on the channel soon. Take care, guys.